Illinois basketball post-game pod from No One Asked Us. Craig Schoet, I'm Logan Lee. Thank you for everybody that, to everybody that tuned in to our first ever Illinois basketball watch-along show. Uh, we thought we'd choose a game to do that and it happened to be tonight. So uh, at least it resulted in a win for us. Made it a little more pleasant. Illinois takes down Michigan in Champaign 68-53 on Friday night. Uh, Illinois improves to 6-0 in the conference. And the Wolverines drop to a measly 1-3. and three. Is that correct? Just 1-3? That and is three? correct. Because they didn't, they didn't play a few games because of COVID. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, that's how our Friday night went. Don't forget, if you are watching this on YouTube, give us a like, please, and thank you. It'd be very much appreciated. Also, subscribe if you haven't already done that. That'd be cool. Uh, rate us on the other uh, podcast destinations on Apple or Spotify. Um, share it. Email us. Let us know if you have some comments. Um, but yes, we are here to talk about the Illinois basketball win over Michigan Friday night. It wasn't, uh, wasn't pretty. wasn't pretty. Um, this was uh, certainly one of the uglier games we've seen this season. Mm-hmm. This is an Illinois basketball team that for a while has looked really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they went to Nebraska this past Tuesday and struggled to beat the worst team in the conference on the road, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but did come out with the win. Thanks largely in part to Trent Frazier's 29 points on Tuesday night. Uh, they the followed that half. up tonight with, <clears throat> yes, they followed that up tonight with uh, a game, which they didn't really trail much. Um, but it, they yeah. really didn't control this game at all until really the last probably six minutes. <laughs> I mean, it, the game was, they had runs where they might've had like an eight point lead or something. And you and I kept saying it, you know, put them away, put them away, you know, go up 12. And it just never happened. They would go up eight and then all of a sudden they'd be only up two. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just kind of a game of runs like that. Uh We'll kind of go over some of the stats uh, from the box score. Um, Kofi led all scores, with, you know, 21 points. Uh, par for the course for him. He did get hit a double-double, <laughs> the 10th and final rebound for him. Might have been a little bit of a cheap one, if you ask us. Uh, but nobody asked us. See what I did there? Uh, he kind I was, of I was that thinking rebound, it. <laughs> pulled it right out of the hands of some Poor Michigan guy. I'm not sure how that happened, but he walked away with the double double 21 and 10. Trent Frazier, who had, I believe, only two points at halftime. I think that's what I said because there wasn't a lot of scoring outside of Kofi. Uh, I think Trent only had two points in the first half, finished with 18. Uh, yeah. I think we can officially call him the closer for this team. We'll go into a little more detail on that a little later. Uh, and Alfonso Plummer finished with, yeah, and seven assists for Trent as well and a steal uh 15 points for plumber um he only hit one three again uh but he's he's finding other ways to score so that's nice to see he was four for four from the free throw line trent was six for six from the free throw line he only hit two threes outside of that though outside of those three wasn't a lot of scoring uh grandison had six uh Devont, Devontae, uh Devontae williams had five um scoring there was did play a deeper bench tonight a little bit uh, we did see a little bit of Melendez early uh, for all of about a minute and a half. <laughs> um, and then uh, that was kind of that. So thoughts after this uh, one pretty, but a win's a win. Exactly. Yeah. It's one of those that um, you just needed to be on the, the good side of the scoreboard uh, at the end of the game because it um, things weren't rolling. Things weren't going smooth like they had been uh, the past week. And it started in Nebraska. So so it was one of those games that you had to fight through things that when they're not going your way. Um, the refs had a, a loose whistle early or a tight whistle early. What's it called? Tight whistle early, uh, blowing a lot of dead balls, a lot of fouls, tough to get in a flow, tough to get in a rhythm. Um, I think Illinois was in the bonus halfway through the first half. So um, just, just not a, a game with much flow to it. And that, that caused both teams, I think, to, to play down a little bit and, and not, not come ready to play on top of the fact that Michigan was without their, their best player who I'm sure we'll get into. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was uh, something we knew shortly before the game started. Um, yeah. Of course, this was the same Michigan team that had been on a COVID pause for the past week or so. Um, they had missed two games. Was that yes. right? Did, Michigan State. They were and supposed Purdue. to play Purdue and Michigan State conveniently. Uh, supposed to play Purdue and Michigan State and Illinois uh, when they go on their pause. So they had not played the last, you know, almost a week or so. And then they go into tonight without Hunter, Dick- Hunter Dickinson, who is uh, was you know was their preseason All American. Um, had a really good season last year. This team in general, though, has has really struggled this season. So I'm um, sorry to think of him being too much in terms of uh, accolades. But uh, either way, that was that was crucial for Illinois. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I think I said before the game started, I said, this is, you can't lose this game. You just can't. Um, this is a home game against a team that's not very good and they don't have their best player. So I was, I, I don't want to say I was ever not confident that they weren't going to win this game. They never really lost control of the game, but they waited until the last possible second to really put Michigan away. Yep. Uh, it is a little concerning. I won't, I won't lie about it. Um, they, they looked really good for a long stretch there. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. They were also beating on teams that aren't very good. Uh, yeah. They were beating on the Missouri's of the world and the lower part of the big 10, you know, conference. And it, they were getting 20 point wins, but against not much. We've, mm-hmm. we've mentioned it before. Even with this game, they still don't have a marquee win yeah. on their res- on their resume. Uh, yeah. Not that that's really all that important right now, uh, but the point is that the stretch that they've been on, where they won now six or seven in a row, um, uh, hasn't been a lot of serious competition. Then they go to Nebraska, who again is the worst team in the Big Ten. They just got blown out by Purdue tonight, and Illinois struggled to get past them. So this is. What the team that we've seen the last week is not the same team we were seeing exactly. prior to that. I mean, prior to that, this team was hit firing, firing on all cylinders. Uh, they were making threes right and left. Right now, threes aren't falling. I mean, they this team almost it seems like they just can't buy a three-point basket. They had two from Trent, two Trent was two for eight, Jake was two for five, Plummer was only one for five, Demonte was one for two. Um, those are guys that were making three or four a night. Um, and right now they're the last two nights they've struggled. Uh, it's, I mean, it's been Kofi and it's been, it's been Trent. I mean, those are the two guys that have been carrying this team right now through these, this rough stretch. I say a rough stretch. They've both been wins, but um, <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta put some of this stuff together because this, this schedule at this point gets a lot more difficult. It really kind of started tonight without Dickinson. It wasn't quite the same, but you gotta, gotta be ready because Monday, if you're not ready on Monday, it's you don't got a chance when Purdue comes to town. Yeah, what you touched on is probably my biggest concern is the shooting um, because that's how this team was winning games. Now, credit to them, they're finding ways to win when they're not shooting the ball well the last two games. But this is a team that is built to hit threes and to get 25 points in the paint from Kofi. Like it's it's either or. This isn't Iodosumu is not here to hit that mid range pull up that he hit five or six times a game last year. This is a Kofi at the rim or Plummer Grandison uh, Frazier behind the arc. And the last two games, the shooting has not been there. So hopefully, there this is a two game slump and it's against two teams that Illinois was able to beat without shooting the ball well and they get back in the rhythm. Um, I really thought that it was going to be a, a one-time thing on the road at Nebraska. They'd come back tonight and they'd shoot 35, 40% from three, hit 10 or 12 because that was their average, and it, it just didn't happen. How many did they hit tonight? How many threes? Nine? Seven? It, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, that that's my biggest concern is the, the three-point shooting specifically, but – Six credit. They hit six. They only had six. Okay. So credit to the team for finding a way to win without hit them hitting. Also too, I do want to give credit to Michigan. Um, what they were doing was impacting the way Illinois ran the offense. They were up in the guards grill. Yeah. Uh, all night 
Kofi, they were having trouble getting Kofi the ball. Um, I know we said it on our stream and I saw people on Twitter saying it, that they don't understand why Kofi's not getting touches. This was late in the, this was in the first half, late in the first half. It just, it was baffling. They would go down the floor and, and Kofi would be open in the paint and they couldn't get the ball to him because the Michigan guards were up in the Illinois guards face. They were running them off of screens. They weren't allowing them to get open looks for three. And when Illinois did, they, they were missing them. Um, so, so credit to Michigan. They came out without their best yeah. player. They played well. And we talked about it before the game on the stream. Was there any concern about what Illinois did to Michigan last year in Michigan without IO them returning the favor? And we were both a little, a little concerned, but I, I don't think yeah. too much to be concerned about, but it, it was in the back of our head. Yeah. I, I, I mean, teams have, teams are figuring out how to defend this team. Um, yeah. I don't think it was any big secret, but you know, they've, they've done their adjustments. They know how to defend. Um, Kofi is obviously hard to stop, but you can get in situations where you can do things to limit him, limit his mm-hmm. touches. But again, when Illinois is not hitting threes, it really takes a lot of the dimensions off the, out of this team. So they, they definitely got to figure that out. Um, but as you said, yeah, credit to Michigan. Um, they've, they've had a rough year. Uh, not not the season that I think anybody really expected. I think you and I both picked them to finish in the top three in the conference. Yep. That is certainly not the way the season has has panned out for them and likely not how it will pan out. Um, but uh, it's a win a win is a win for Illinois and they could use it because they they're it's a tough stretch ahead. Um, I do want to say, I want to point out that a few weeks ago, on this show or on our show. Do you know what I'm going to say? I don't, I I have an idea, but I don't know. This is not about Trent Frazier. This is not about Trent Frazier. And I know this wasn't exactly earth shattering stuff out of Logan Lee's mouth, but I said (laughs) it was after the Arizona game. And I said, they should be seven and oh. Oh yeah. You did before, before Purdue. And granted, they lost one of these games because they they lost the Florida A and M game. They didn't lose the game. They didn't they lose the game, but they didn't. didn't the game play was canceled. The game, the game they didn't was canceled. Play, yes, they didn't play the game. So they did win six in a row since then. All six of those games they should have won. But I mean, that's that's this this team's playing well, uh, even when they're not. They're still winning games. Are we ready to start looking ahead? Because. <laughs> What's coming yeah. up is what's coming yeah. up is, is certainly I, I going will, to be. Yeah, I was a, looking uh, ahead before task. the game this afternoon, about three or four o'clock. I was looking ahead at the schedule, what was on the schedule after, because. So let's yeah. let's talk about this, uh, yep. because we've kind of, you know, this so far they kind of brushed through the easy part of their schedule. Here's what's coming up Monday, this coming Monday at, at noon on Martin Luther King Day in Champaign. Noon Eastern. Noon Eastern time, Purdue comes to town, currently ranked number seven in the country and just slaughtered Nebraska. Then they go to Maryland, which is a road game, but not as worrisome. Then they host Michigan State, who is currently number 10 in the country and the only other unbeaten team in the conference. Then they go to Northwestern, not as worrisome. Then they host Wisconsin who is currently ranked number 13 and playing a lot better than I think anybody ever expected. Then they go to Indiana, which is always going to be tough. And then they go to Purdue. Yikes. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the reason this team needed to start this big 10 season six. And yeah. Up. Yeah. Those last three are the, are the big three. Yeah. There's uh the, there's, there's going to be some, some rough games here up until then it kind of alternates. You know, you got Purdue, but then you have Maryland. You got Michigan State, but then you got Northwestern. But then once you get to that last run of three there, uh, was it Indiana, Ohio State, Purdue again? Uh, No, Wisconsin, Indiana, Purdue. Okay, Wisconsin, Indiana, Purdue. February 2nd, February 5th, February 10th. Those three are the three in a row. It's, what's it, Murderer's Murderers Row row. or whatever. Yeah, Yeah, those three are what you got to look for because – before that, it kind it kind of alternates, yeah. but um, but it definitely gets harder. Like we said um, a couple episodes ago, up until 
today probably, Michigan had played the easiest schedule in the Big Ten. They had played Minnesota, Rutgers, and Nebraska, I think, and all three bottom-tier teams. Illinois is right there. They haven't played any talented Big Ten teams. So they are 6-0. and They've won all of them, but it's a good thing they're 6-0 and because the losses are going to come, and they're probably going to start this week. Yeah, very likely, very likely. Um, a few other things that I know we talked about during the, the game stream um, that we probably need to touch on here, um, the Curbelo thing. Um, mm-hmm. According to Brad Underwood, Curbelo is starting to practice with the team. Uh, in some capacity so can't think that he will be in action on monday but might potentially be looking at friday night um at maryland as a potential return for him not saying that's happening don't know anything but you have to think that if he's if he's now starting to practice that a week from now he might be available uh, for some minutes which a healthy curbello will help this team a lot um, as great as Trent and DeMonte have, have done in running the point, this team needs a point guard, yep. somebody that can have the ball in his hands, distribute the ball. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't love the way he plays. And I understand that, uh, you and I have both been critics of his at various times, but he is a point guard. And right now this team does not really have one. Yep. Trent has done fine in the role but getting him back for this stretch will be key. Um, another thing, I, I kind of briefly touched on it, another double-double for Kofi. Uh-huh. This is now, what we say, nine in a row? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, so he is, he is closing in on records there. Um, again, he kind of squeaked it out at the end. I'm not sure that he really got it. Uh, yeah. but they gave it to him anyway. So, um, and then again, I don't remember, I'm already losing track of what we talked about on this <laughs> and what we <laughs> talked about in the previous thing. Um, the six and O thing. Did we talk about that on the, what about it? The, the 2005, did you mention that on this or before? I, well, I mentioned it on the stream, but I also mentioned the five and O start. Uh, in the post game of the Nebraska game, first five and okay. starting the Big Ten since 05. So, okay, well, it's going to be the first six and 0 start. Six it would and be the first start. seven yeah. start because that thank team you. started thank 15 you. and 0. <laughs> thank you, Captain Obvious. Uh, but yeah, so those are kind of the the biggest takeaways I think um, from tonight. Yep. Just yep. got to look ahead to look ahead to Monday. Monday's a big one, noon Eastern yep. time, 11 Central time in Champaign on Fox um against purdue the purdue is uh the big 10 favorite they have the, probably the best they do have well he may not be the all-american candidate but i think Jaden ivy is probably the best guard in the conference he's not having quite the season that the yeah. young man from wisconsin is but um and they got it if anybody has post players to stop kofi uh it's purdue so yeah kofi uh, they, is... and, they, and they have two of them <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Kofi is going to have his work cut out for him. Uh, Zach Eady, six, th- or not six, seven, three, or seven, four, and he's put on some bulk. He was a little bit thinner last year, but he's really bulked up this year. Um, I think he starts, and then you got Travion Williams, who is a all Big Ten caliber player coming off the bench. So Kofi's not going to get much rest. Um, he's going to need to get in the ice tub or get in those, what are those things that they put on their legs that, help him recover whatever they are i see lebron wearing them all the time posting pictures whatever they are kofi's gonna have to get in those too oh yeah (laughs) gonna have to get in those get those legs rested because uh it's a quick turn um two days rest and you're back on the court for an afternoon game on a monday um early afternoon game i guess a morning game in champaign um so yeah it's gonna be a test it's gonna be a huge 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 test for this team. And they're certainly in need of, of a marquee win. So yeah, it'd be nice to get one. Um, could we've all been pull off the Arizona thing uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Would like to see a little bit of a better outcome. Um, yeah. I, I said it, I said it on 
Monday show or whenever we recorded, I would take one and one uh, this yeah. stretch. Um, obviously, we already got the first win, um, yeah. but would definitely love to see a second one here because uh, I know you've mentioned it before. Got to win the home games. So that's Defend your home that's court. Where we're at. Everyone has, and not everyone, Illinois fans, the crazy fan base that Illinois has on online, the mad online Illinois fan base is wondering why this team has a 25 next to their name and not a 15 because they're now 13 and three, one, seven in a row now, six in a row, whatever it is. Cause they haven't beaten. Anybody. It's because they haven't beat anybody. They have not beat anybody. Their biggest win. And it's been, it's debatable now because one team has really played well lately. Their best win is either at Iowa or at home against Notre Dame. Cause I was Dame- not very good. That Notre Dame team is getting better, but at the time they were not playing well. Well, they're getting better, but they're also are an okay team in a pretty bad conference this year. Yes. So, and they're not even, I don't even think they're a tournament team right now. So, um, but yes, uh, they, that's, yes. <laughs> the reason why they're just 25 is because they don't have, they haven't played anybody. And they everyone points anybody. Everyone points to, their, to the net ranking. Illinois' net ranking is 11. But that's not the ranking of Illinois. That's a ranking for your opponent. Like, yes, Illinois is ranked 11th, but they're not technically ranked 11th. It's like, okay, Michigan played the 11th. It's weird. It's not like a normal ranking system is what I'm trying to say. We shouldn't be – this would be my my word to the Illinois fan base. Cause I know that I know how people feel. I feel the same way. I, I do feel like this is, this team is better than 25th in the country. I won't argue with that, yeah. but again, it's who cares? It is January 14th. Why should we care right now? What te- this team is ranked. They have a lot more basketball to play. And quite frankly, all that really matters is what the record is and, where they're playing at the end of the season so and it could go a couple different ways i think from here on so hopefully it goes in the positive direction um yep. but i think that's gonna be it do you have anything else you want to chime in on before monday no if you if you didn't tune in for the watch party or whatever we're calling it watch along live watch along uh join us next time um get in the chat let us know what you're seeing. Um, it was fun because normally I kind of sit on the couch and do my own thing. So it, it's fun to to watch the game with someone else and, and kind of talk through it as it's happening. So this is a shorter post game show because we just talked about it live as it was happening on the stream. So I know it, it's a two hour game. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, that's fine. Come in, say hi. We'll say hi and chat it up a little bit and then go be on your way. But um, Join us next time. Um, probably not going to be Monday uh, from the sound of it. Um, TBD. But, but maybe um, next, a week from tonight, a week from Friday uh, at Maryland, we might might hit that back up. So so thanks to that. But other than that, like, share, subscribe this, and give us a thumbs up on this as well. You took all the words out of my mouth. You did a great job. That's why you're <laughs> the world's best host. All right, we're going to shut it down. <laughs> Uh, this is our Grammy nom. This is our not Grammy. Our Oscar, Oscar, Oscar this tape. This is our Oscar real uh, tape. So yes, uh, Illinois takes down Michigan in Champaign, sixty-eight fifty-three on Friday night. The Illini improved to thirteen and three overall, six and zero oh in the Big Ten. We will see you sometime, probably Monday at some point. We'll record a show. Um, but until whenever we do record, uh, this has been our post game show from no one asks us. He's Craig show. I'm Logan Lee. Like subscribe, all that stuff. We'll see you later. Bye.